All right, good morning, traders. Uh, welcome to the Pro Trader webinar today with Patrick Wayland. Uh, we've had Patrick several All times. Right, good before. morning, traders. Uh, welcome. And uh, uh, so, 34 years old, living in Hawaii, surfing the big waves and riding the waves of the stock market on YouTube. He has been tra day trading for six years, documenting his journey through the markets on his daily YouTube channel. Uh, I will put the link here to his YouTube channel uh, into the chat, as well as some Bookmap special offers if you're interested. Uh, there are longer term special offers you can only get through Patrick. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, click on that if you're interested. Uh, go through the disclosures and then let me turn it right over to Patrick. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, Patrick, let's see. I got your screen up and uh, you are good to go. All right, all right. Good morning, traders. We were just, uh, just got done on my live stream and uh, here we are, book map. Bookmap, everybody always asks me, what is Bookmap? Well, here we are today. We're going to spend the next hour basically looking at the market here and uh, talking about how I use the Bookmap every day for my actual personal uh, trading and what the kind of synopsis is. It's interesting because I do feel like uh, the way that I look at the Bookmap might be a little different than uh, some of the other other people out there, the way they use it. So one thing that I really like to see about if I'm looking for a short, I want to see a lot of liquidity sitting below us. If I'm looking for a long, I want to see a lot of liquidity to, you know, above us. So right now you can see, we basically have the NASDAQ pulled up. We have the ES. The thing about the ES versus the NASDAQ is there's a lot more volume, a lot more liquidity, right? On the ES compared to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ moves like a bucking Bronco. The ES moves more like a train. The I would say the ES is like kind of like a freight train. It's just kind of moving to levels, finding liquidity. Remember, buyers, bulls, bulls and bears, right? The market is here for one purpose and one purpose alone. And that is basically facilitating trades. The market doesn't care if it goes up. The market doesn't care if it goes down. The market is simply just a place for buyers and sellers to interact. And that's what the book map really illustrates, more so than looking at level two. The problem with only looking at level two is you're not gonna see like all this stuff kind of being added and removed. Like if, I don't know, for me, I'm more of a visual person. So I like to see the visual, the heat map here on the book map and really kind of get an idea of what we have here. Like right now we have liquidity at the 27s. We have liquidity down here at the 15,000s. And the way that I would look at this right now is it's pretty even, right? It's pretty even. There's not, I wouldn't say there's much of a difference between the buyers and sellers uh, above us or below us. So that kind of leads me to believe that the market could push back up here, take out this 28 level, this would kind of put us up there like towards the 30s. We got the VWAP all the way up there to the 39s. But the problem is when those buyers and sellers are equal, you're not going to get a very kind of clean move because again, it's just kind of choppy area. It's more of a consolidation zone because you don't really have like a, a committed seller or a buyer kind of stepping in there. So there's a chance that we kind of just chop around at this level for a little bit until either the buyers or the sellers step up and we get a more committed move. You know, we've seen massive orders just pop up on the book map out of nowhere. And we've seen, you know, 30, 40, 50 point moves happen right after that. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye on the book map. It's pulled up on my chart always. I got the book map, I got my charts. And I would say if I'm in a trade, if I am actually in a actual trade and I'm trading, I am keeping a very close eye on the book map pretty much consistently. So you can see right now we got some buyers stepping in, a little bit of volume. We're moving up here. I have it set up as well with the candlesticks. There's that push to the 25s, just like we are looking for. Again, you know, you can see how we took out that liquidity. It was all right here at the 24, 25s. They took it out 
And now the question is, do we start to move back down? You can see these buyers are now, look at that, massive buyer right there, the 22s, 100 contracts on the bid right now. So that's, that's well, on the book. And then they just pulled that order. Or I think, yeah, they pulled it. They did not, uh, yeah, they didn't get filled. So they try to support it there for a second. You got sellers again there at the 30s. We pushed up there to the 27s. We got the VWAP up there at the 40s. So I think this is looking pretty good to push through 30s next. And then you get the 40 liquidity up there on this kind of reversal off of this bot. And we bounced off that 15,000 area. We were talking about on my live stream. I'm live every day on YouTube, by the way, if you've never tuned in. We're trading the ES, we're trading the NASDAQ. And right now, look at that, push up there to the 30s. So we went from the 15 to the 30s, about a 15 point move so far. And you have all that liquidity sitting up there at the VWAP level right now at the 40s. So I'm a big believer in the VWAP, pretty simple strategy. We're looking for, you know, liquidity. We're looking for buyers. We're looking for sellers. People think that if there's liquidity, like let people think when I say liquidity, that means there's that's orders right on the book. And I think there's a miscommunicate uh, a misconception when it comes to how to read this. If I don't see that there's a lot of liquidity sitting above us, or I don't see that there's any liquidity sitting above us, well, then why is the market going to move up there? Think about that. Like, why is the market going to go higher when there's nobody facilitating trades above us? If there's no liquidity above us, there's no reason for the market to move higher, right? If there's no reason to the, if there's no liquidity to the downside, we are, you know, watching this liquidity. So again, look at that. They just added liquidity there, the 32s, starting to move back down here. We pushed up there into the VWAP level. I think the high was, what, 35s? And now we're pulling back down here. And you can see there are some sellers are popping up. You'll see these, like, flashes. Watching the liquidity here, 27. And just kind of watching... Look at the liquidity down there at the 05s now. Liquidity at the 1500s. If I'm looking for a short from this level, and I think this is going to go down, I'm looking at these levels of liquidity for a target. Because I'm thinking, okay, if we start to sell down, not that I don't think we can't break through these levels, but I also think that, you know, if somebody steps up and wants to buy, well, I don't want to hold on to my short if we have a big buyer sitting below us and we get that pop back up. So we want to... I would say almost like front run these big orders. You know, so. Crypto heck, all the liquidity was higher. That's what I said. What are you talking <laughs> But, um, yeah. We got to remember too, at the, at the same time, you can sit here all day long and, and read this price action, read the liquidity, and somebody else can come in with a big order and move the market down or up. I mean, just because these levels are sitting here right now does not mean they're going to be here in 20 seconds or 30 seconds or even a minute later. It's just constantly moving. I would say the ES is a lot more consistent with these levels holding. You can see like this 4,410 level has been here since about, what, 950 this morning so that level has been sitting there since about 950 and just kind of going sideways there waiting for this to move down there well hey the best part is everybody can read liquidity however they like where this is the this is the patrick whelan webinar and we're here to Talk about how I read it. So I see people in the chat with different ideas on how they read it, and that's fine. But uh, this is how I'm reading it and how I'm using it every day. You can watch me live on YouTube if you like. Um, the NASDAQ right now at the 20s here, still kind of holding up there. The VWAP up there at the 40s. How do you know if it's buyers or sellers? Well, you don't really know, but I would say if there's liquidity sitting above the price, and that's a pretty good chance that those are sellers or could be a 
I guess, buy stop limit order if you really wanted to, but. And there we go, pushing back up here. If you want to add the candles, all you do is uh, go here to configure. I don't know if it'll show up on my chart right now because we're the way we're streaming it. But if you go there to configuration, uh, I think you actually go to you right click and then go to heat map settings. And if you click on the top left, it'll say uh, candlesticks and you can add the candlesticks on there. So I think. Um, Yeah, you can set it to one minute or two minute. Like right now, those are the one minute candles. So we just change it to the two minute candle. So this is the new two minute candle right now, pushing up there through the 35s. We got that VWAP at the 40 level. So you'll see how this candle is forming. Our stop order is shown. Um, I don't well, I don't believe it depends on the stop, I guess. But a, a stop limit order is not going to show up. And there's that push up there through the 40s now. 42s, 43s. Right up there to the VWAP. Through the VWAP there on the NASDAQ, that next level is going to be 50s up there. You can see the 50 liquidity sitting there. To the person earlier that said that the, all the liquidity was not above us and the market was going to go down, well, it's good to be Patrick Whelan sometimes. And there's that push up through the VWAP up there to the 50s now. You see a lot of buyers stepping in there through this level to squeeze it back up through the 50s. A little short squeeze as well. If you short it down there at the 15,000s, we feel sorry for you. Probably not the best idea. You don't want to short the bottom. It's a very simple idea, my friends. If you're going to be looking, if you're going to be looking for a long, looking for a short, ask yourself one simple question. Ask yourself one simple question. Do buyers want to buy low or do sellers want to sell low? Like where do buyers want to buy and where do sellers want to sell? Sellers want to sell high, buyers want to buy low. So if we're at a low of the day, if we're at a low in the overall price structure, is there a better chance that there's going to be more sellers selling at that low, or is there going to be a better chance there's going to be more buyers buying at that low? So that's a rule that I just kind of love to live by. And if you really ask yourself where the market's heading, you know, if we're sitting at the low down there at the 15,000s, is it like, huh? Is there a better chance that buyers start to step in here or is there a better chance that the sellers continue selling? So. So, uh, so for, somebody's asking, how do you get this screen? This is the book map. We're using the book map app here. Check out book map. There's a link down below to learn more. And uh, right now, looking here at the ES, you got liquidity there at the 22s. The VWAP on the ES is pretty much right there where that liquidity is sitting at here. We get through that 22 level, you've got 30s and then 35 on the book right now. If you look over here on the right-hand side, you can see we have two things to look at. We have the current order book, the COB, COB, which is basically showing us where those orders are sitting at on the actual book. Right. And then if you look all the way over here at this, this is the SVP. So this is session volume profile. And you can see that a lot of the action today on the ES has been trading here at the 415, uh, 415 area. And if we go over here, same thing on the NASDAQ. Yeah, 40 area, a lot of volume, a lot of action. So now if we look at that session volume profile, well, look at where that next big chunk of volume has been traded at the 70s, right? The 70 area sitting there. And you can see there's not a lot of volume traded in between here from the 50s up there to the 70s, which when we have those areas kind of imbalance, it's just easier for the market to move through those levels 
because there's not as much resistance sitting in there. Overall trend right now, still with the ES below the VWAP, the NASDAQ's back above the VWAP here. So I would really want to see the ES clear out the VWAP level and then try to push through the 22s next to get the NASDAQ moving. Um, currently, maybe a little bit of a pullback here to the VWAP again on the NASDAQ. The ES holding up there at the 21s for now. NASDAQ, most of the liquidity up there at the 70s, 75s. Look at that. Someone just put up a big sell order. I mean, that comes out of nowhere. And look, now it's gone. So there's not much you could do about it. If those things pop up, you can't really predict. You know, I can't predict that someone's going to put a big sell order out there at 41. And right now, just holding there at the VWAP. Problem is the ES cannot get clear of the VWAP. The ES getting held down there at the 22s over and over here. So that's going to make the NASDAQ obviously weak. The dollar is selling off. The dollar sold back here. So pulling back right now on the one minute chart to the 21 EMA. Will the NASDAQ find buyers here? The QQQ right around the VWAP there as well. Right around the view out there on the QQQ for now. I'm a big believer in uh, keeping an eye on the QQQ, the ETF as well when I'm trading futures. Kind of watching here to see. Would really like to see the ES get above the VWAP here. NASDAQ back above the 40s for now. The QQQ there at the VWAP as well. So 365.30 area for the QQQ needs to kind of clear out there. I would say as long as the ES stays below the VWAP here, I'd be a little hesitant to get too, too committed to a long just yet. That 15-minute chart on the ES, trouble there at the VWAP for now. The NASDAQ kind of above the VWAP, chopping around the VWAP here. Setting up on the three-minute chart. 40 on the NASDAQ resistance here for now. We ran into that overall trend line there at the 50s from this morning here on the uh, ES on the NASDAQ so far. Dollar selling off here though. The dollar is pulling back. Kind of a double top there on the dollar. I'm looking at the DXY. DXY. And. That 15 minute candle on the ES right now, just pretty much right in that mid range. See if they get this push up there through the 50s next. Both the QQQ and the NASDAQ just stuck here at the VWAP for now. The ES at the 420 is just stuck there. NASDAQ trying to push up there, I think, to the 50s coming up. They can just clear out this 45 level and then try it to the 50s. And then you got 60s up there next. Needs to get away from the VWAP here. The QQQ is just right there at the VWAP now. And again, the ES just in the middle of that 15 minute candle. See if they go right to the 50s here, this little breakout up there to the 48s. Should take out 50s right here. 
Trying to take out the 50s, and then you got that push up there of the 60s coming. Nice little breakout there. I took that from the 40s up through the 50s now. Moving my stop to 50. And we go all the way through the 60s. You can see all that liquidity sitting up there with the 60s. Stops now at the 50s here. And looking for a break through the 55s to push. Watching here. Possibly getting stuck 55. Need to push right through there though. Strength, strength, strength. And we're stopped out for 10 points on that one. Kind of running into that resistance there, the 55, 60 area. We got a high up there to 57. What do you want EMA on the NASDAQ at the 36s? Big Spark. I've never heard of you, but you've heard of me, so I guess I'm winning. So, thanks for your comment. So, the ES still stuck there at the VWAP for now, so... Woo. Straight back down off that 55 push through the VWAP again here. The QQQ just gave it up right there quickly and sold it straight back down. Good thing I took profit. The white line is the VWAP here on the NASDAQ. The dollar finding some support, push it back up. I'm gonna grab a bottle of water really quickly. DRB, keep an eye on that QOP level. The NASDAQ back down there to the 20s. We bounced here earlier. Will they hold it up there? This is Monday's high now, that 20 level. We still got that gap fill potential from earlier. Both the ES and the NASDAQ looking weak right here. They sell through this 20 level. Just ripped it back up there off the 20s into that 30 kind of fair value gap from that little move down here so far. Liquidity at 75, still there. Push up there to the 21 EMA, selling back down here again.
trying to see if they move this down through the 20s here. Big Spark, he's not a solid trader, very risky, gambles a lot, does make money, yes. Well, I guess, you know, there's two ways to look at it. What you think I'm doing is gambling? Totally fine. Do I make money? Yes. There you go. You just, you just, you're counterdicting yourself. Through the 20s now, down there to the 15s. Short here for that 20 break. Looking for possibly moving straight through the 15,000s here. Need to get through this 10 level there. Moving my stop to 10 here now to guarantee 10 points. We should sell through 15,000s next. There's liquidity at the 15,000s. Take that out. Stopped out there for now. Be looking for a break below 15,000 next for another opportunity. Bigger time frames are definitely showing that 15,000 break possible. Move down there to the 80 to the 67s. You look at the 15 minute chart here. Just need to get through that 04s up there next. Will we take out that 15,000 liquidity? We still got, we're below that 15 minute opening range right now here. That's that 20 area is that 15 minute opening range. The three minute chart, a little push back up again off that 04 level. If the ES sells through that low of day at the 12s, then I think the ES moves down here as well. So. And looking for this 15,000 to break. All that liquidity sitting there at 15,000s right now, acting as a magnet to the price action here. The ES again kind of bouncing off the of 13s, looking like she wants to break to the lows. The ES 15 minute chart has just been kind of stuck in this range right now between this 12 and uh, 20 level. Make a new low here on the ES. We go through 15,000 on the NASDAQ quickly. Hey, Patrick, I think uh, I need to demo for you the uh, Market Pulse tool uh, in Bookmap. So, yeah, uh, yeah you can basically uh, uh, hear the market uh, with this. It's a little widget that will show the volume pressure. So, yeah. so like right now, you, you know, probably start dinging on the on the red side, on the sell side. Uh, okay, how do I set that up? So, so it, it'll it, the 15 thousands, by the way. Hey, sorry, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I, I should demo it for you. Uh, these, these kind of like, uh, 
uh, instrument gauges, uh, and they're very easy to read and, and hear. Okay. Where where can I set that up? Okay, right. Yeah, I'll I'll, 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 I'll I'll connect with you after. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Look at that move through the fifteen thousands down there to the eighty eights. But 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 Patrick, how how did you know? And the ES down there are the 09s now, 10s, 09s. Damien's worried about individual stocks. We're trading futures. I don't know why you're even here, Damien. There's that break through the 15,000s. We got the break down through the 21 EMA, that 30 level, and then right through the 15,000s now. So that was the breakdown we were kind of looking for there through down there to the 90s. And we're going to look for that. That gap fill puts us down there on the ES. That would put us down here. Where does that put us? Basically puts us down there to the 70s here to fill that gap on the NASDAQ. So looks like we get that gap fill here beautifully. We got the 15 minute range breakdown from the 20s down there to the 88s. And you're looking for that 70 level to fill the gap here on the NASDAQ now. You can see it on the book map there as well. That liquidity sitting down there at the 70s. 70 liquidity down there. The buyers know that gap sitting there. So. On the ES here, looking for that 05 uh, through that 07 level on the ES to bounce from earlier was that low there. So here we go. Buyers stepping in there at the 80s, liquidity at the 80s there for now. And then after that, 75s, you still got a lot of aggressive selling here. See those big bubbles through the 80s. Down there to a low of 75, 76, 74s. Let's go right to the 70s here, baby. What a beautiful move. All talked about before it even happened. Let's go. Down there, 73 now. And we have the gap fill on the dot. Bang, 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 bang. Let's go. Beautiful move there, getting the gap fill, the 15 minute opening range breakdown and spot on. Absolutely beautiful move here. You gotta love it. Gaps love to get filled, my friends. All right, pretty happy with that. All right, just kind of watching to see. We got that gap fill now. I don't want to be too aggressive to keep shorting down here, especially after we just got a 60-point move that was really easy, really nice. Don't go chasing waterfalls. It's uh, important that we, we trade what we're looking at here and not try to be too uh, too greedy on the day here right now. So.
just want to show you guys really quickly on this gap fill potential as this setup here. So that was what we were looking at. This was the plan from this morning, that gap fill. We had the push up there. We had that 15 minute opening range. So this is something that we use pretty much on, you know, every day on my channel for my trading. That 15 minute opening range is that first 15 minute candle, right? So that first 15 minute candle was right there. Kind of looks messed up now, but basically first 15 minute candle sets our range for the opening range. Once we get that, we can go to our smaller time frames. We got a little break below it earlier. We pushed back up. We ran to this resistance at the 60s. We then dumped down there. We filled the gap. So very kind of clean and simple move there on the NASDAQ this morning. All talked about before the move happened. And we saw the follow through kind of with the book map over there. So we're using the book map for the follow through. Once we have our overall plan, when we're looking at that 15 minute chart, the bigger time frames here, we're looking at the bigger time frames, and then we're looking at the book map to get our follow through and to kind of read the price action as the market is moving there. So that's something I'm using every day. I think the opening range breakdown, breakup, whatever you want to call it. If it's going up, it's a breakup. If it's going down, it's a breakdown. But that op that 15 minute opening range on on futures on the Nasdaq on you know, the ES is really just a clean and simple way to trade. I would say if you're a beginner trader and, you know, there's nothing wrong with waiting for the first 15 minute candle to close and then get an idea of where we're at. You know, if we're inside of that first 15 minute range, well, that's telling you that we're probably chopping, right? We're not trending. There's not something to really like actionable for trades. So that, that's a good rule of thumb. If the first 15 minute candle opens up, and then the price action on the next candle is right there in the middle of that first 15 minute candle, the opening range. Well, there's probably no reason to take a trade because the market's not trending. The market's not making the move that we're looking for. So definitely, um, like I said, not a good idea to try to short down there at the seventies. There's that rip back up about a 30 point rip back up to the 21 EMA. We filled the gap. Anytime we fill the gap, you know, you want to be a little cautious again, because the way I look at it as well is if you missed out, if you didn't take the trade, you know, from the 20 down there to the 70s, are you really going to short there at the 70s? Is that really a good idea? If you didn't take the trade from the 20s, should you be jumping in short at the 70s at that point? So again, guys, buyers want to buy low, sellers want to sell high. This is a perfect example of that. The sellers stepped in there when we push, we try to get that push through the 55 through the 60s. We got stuck, the sellers came in, and then we sold down. Not a, not rocket science. You don't need to overcomplicate trading. Just think about it very simply. If the buyers want to buy, where do they want to buy? They want to buy at the lows. If the sellers want to sell, they want to try to sell at the highs. They want to sell at a high, you know, a lower high. They want to sell at a high high. They want to sell at a high either way. It's either a lower high or, you know, the high of day. That's where they want to sell at. The buyers want to buy on those, you know, lower on those higher lows. They want to, it's basically like buyers want to buy higher lows. Sellers want to sell lower highs. So identify those two things. Identify where the higher low is. Identify where the lower high is. And that'll keep you out of basically shorting or getting long at the right or wrong time. At the wrong time. You know, you want to be aware of the structure, the market structure. And well, here we are right now, 15,000 back up there, about a 30 point move off of the lows. We got a bunch of liquidity stepped in there at the 80s, only 51 contracts. That's what's so crazy about the ES versus the NASDAQ. If you look at the ES here, look at the difference in the amount of contracts on the book, right? So the ES at the 12 level, there's 246 contracts sitting there. At the 05 level, 4,005, you've got 288 contracts sitting there. If you go over here to the NASDAQ, I mean, the most contracts that you can see right now on the book is all the way down there at the 50s, is 100 contracts. And anything close to the price action right now, the max is like 50 contracts. So very different in terms of the amount of liquidity or the amount of actual buyers and sellers in terms of actual volume. And you see the NASDAQ, this very kind of up, down, quick, bang, 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 bang. It's much more like a pinball. 
The Nasdaq's definitely a lot more like pinball. Like it's bouncing off levels. It's ding, 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 ding. Even though, you know, it's finding resistance. It's like it drops down, it pops back up, it drops down, it pops back up. It's very much kind of testing levels and breaking through levels and just not really holding every support and every resistance perfectly. The NASDAQ, I would say, loves to overshoot. The NASDAQ definitely loves to overshoot the, uh, the levels where the ES, it's just a lot harder for the ES to overshoot because you got a lot of volume sitting there. You know, it takes a lot more, a lot more action to get these get the ES to kind of break through a level and then overshoot it where the NASDAQ, you know, right now it's what there's nine buyers, 12 sellers, nine. I mean, there's like very, very little, very little volume, actual liquidity sitting there right now. Kind of interesting. Look like right now, 22, look at this thing. Oh, it's all over the place. So there's that 30 point move back up on the NASDAQ. Like I said, we were not trying to get short down there at the 70s. Don't go chasing waterfalls, my friends. The ES, the NASDAQ, both, both are ripping back up here. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. We do not want to be shorting at the bottom. Don't go short in the bottom, my friends. You want to make money? That's probably the number one piece of advice I could give you. Don't buy the top. Don't short the bottom. Well, it... If only it was that easy, but uh, it's not. If trading was only that easy, but it kind of is. Like I said, if it look for where the lower high is, look for where the higher low is. If we're putting in higher lows, you're looking to get long. If we're putting in higher lows, you're looking to buy. If we're putting in lower highs, the trend is trending down. It's, uh, it's I hate to say it's not rocket science, but it's kind of like not rocket science. So right now on the day, I'm pretty much chilling here on the day. Uh, we're up about, what is that? $4,500 $4, on the day trading in my uh, top step funded accounts. I got three top step funded accounts there and trading with the trade copier. So pretty much just chilling right now. I'm normally done trading by about 1030 every day. I trade from 9, 15 a.m. Uh, until about 10:30, 11 o'clock here on YouTube every day. So if you haven't tuned in before, make sure you tune in 9:15 a.m. It's free to watch, free to watch, free to like. If you guys haven't hit that like button, blow up the like button here on the on the uh, book map channel. Let's give them the most likes they've ever seen before. All right, all right. So let's see what happens here. We push back up to that 21 EMA. I think we've absolutely crushed it today with the gap fill, with the sell off, with the move that we got the ES down there. Uh, the ES moved down there almost the low was 05. We said 0705 was kind of our target to the downside there on the ES. And that was the move we got. The NASDAQ's pushing back up here now. And well, there's nothing, nothing wrong with walking away. Nothing wrong with making some money and walking away. Green test, uh, greatest nothing past uh, his evaluation today, drawing silly, silly yellow lines. It's the, the way. I'm 35 years old, Alcee. God. I'm 35 years old with the stamina of a 20-year-old. Put me in the, in the action. Put me in the gym, baby. Let's go. How can one man be so good looking and also so good at this game? Um, on the book map, I have, I believe I have the Global Plus. I got the, the Mac Daddy, the Rolls Royce of plans with book map. I've been using book map now over about a year now, a little over a year using book map. And like I said, I keep it very simple. There's actually a lot of stuff, a lot of tools that you can add on. Bruce has a lot of really great videos on YouTube. There's a bunch of videos out there, other people that are talking about book map. But for me, it's really just trying to trying to keep it simple and just kind of seeing where those big levels are. One thing that I love to see is like if I see something out of the ordinary, like if I see a big buyer step up and I all of a sudden it just pops up on the book map, I'm like, oh, I see big buyer stepping up. Like right now, look at this big buyer stepping up. Look at the price action. Look at that thing just ripped from the 90s to the 15,000s. I mean, that's an actionable trade right there. 
Big buyers stepping in there. You see it on the book map. You can take that push back up through the 90s to the 15,000s. There's a reason that someone's, if there's a big buyer stepping in like that, look at this thing. Again, big buyer there at the 15,000s, up there to the 05s now. That's a 15 point move on the NASDAQ just because we see it here on the book map. I don't care what anyone says. If you're just looking at the level two, if you're just looking at numbers on level two, you will not see the price action the same way. And look at this, up there to the 10s now. You guys saw that big buyer stepped in here at the 90s, right there, that big buyer. We tried to sell into it and then ripped right up there. Again, big buyer to the 10s. So massive move. Massive move here on the NASDAQ now from the, well, not massive, but 15 point, 20 point move there on the NASDAQ quickly, all because we saw that buyer stepping in there on the NASDAQ there on the, in the, on the book map. On the bubble map here, so that's it for me. I'm pretty much wiped out and good to go here. And uh, Big Spark, you're banned for life. You're never coming back. Once you're banned, you don't ever get a redemption. There is no redemption in life. You're done. It's gone. <laughs> uh, look at this thing. Well, at least we dodged a massive bullet not shorting down there at the 70s. I'll tell you that. i tell you that. You might not be a millionaire today, but I'm, I'm, hope I'm hoping that you guys did not short at 70. I'm just hoping. Hoping you took my advice there. Not trying to get long after, not trying to get short after we filled the gap there on the dot on the NASDAQ. It's in hindsight, Damien. It's in hindsight, not financial advice in hindsight. Not financial advice, obviously. And there's that push back up to the tens and there it is. I'm going to go to lunch. I'm going to walk away, take my money and go enjoy the day. Bruce, we still there? Yes, sir. What's uh what's new with Bookmap lately? What we got? Any, what am I looking at that I like you said? So I need to check out the. Uh, what should I check out? You think? After yeah, watching yeah. I, I mean, what after I your your style of trading, I think you'll really like this Market Pulse tool. Like, uh, it'll give um these kind of like pings, like a like a submarine or something. Like, uh, uh, but as the volume picks up, uh, and what's nice about it is uh, you can look at correlated markets. So like you're looking at the Nasdaq now. You can, but you can be. Uh, you can have that little widget up for the uh, volume pressure of the ES and also the Russell or like, you know, the Euro dollar or the dollar index or something. So you can start to see the, you can hear the correlation start to, uh, you can bring that sense into the chart. I like it. No, that, that's pretty cool because I think that would be nice to be able to be looking at the NASDAQ, but then hearing the ES because I'm definitely, you know, uh, yeah, watching watching the ES pretty closely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll connect with you and, and and demo it and uh give you access. Awesome. Yeah, let's do let's set up something so we can do a little tutorial on it and then Okay. I think I think my uh my followers would love it too cuz everybody's kind of trading similar to me. We'll all just be a bunch of submarine pilots in there just listening to ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, I'm 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 done. I'm ready for lunchtime, Bruce. I don't know about you, but I like to have lunch early and be done with the market and walk away. So, all right, sounds good. Well, uh, let, let's wrap it up. Awesome. If you guys haven't hit that like button, help us out. Blow up the like button. If you want to learn more about Bookmap, there's some links down below. I'm using the Bookmap pretty much every single day. I'm not going to promote a product that I don't actually believe in and use. You guys see me on my live stream. We're using the Bookmap every day. This is something that I think is a tool. For me personally, that I definitely do benefit from. You guys saw that big buyer pop up there earlier at the 90s. You saw the rip up there to the 15s just like that out of nowhere. So 
I think there's a lot of value. There's a lot of different ways to use the book map. Like I said, there's a bunch of tools. There's a bunch of videos. You can use the book map for ETFs. You can use it for different currencies. You can use it for cryptocurrency. You can use it across the board. I'm using it for futures and I'm pretty much using like the most simple possible way of using it. But I'm going to do a little tutorial here with uh, Bruce the next few days and uh, get a, maybe a little, a little upgrade and figure out what I need make it a little bit better. So if you guys haven't hit that like button, go ahead and blow it up. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning live on YouTube over on my channel. Big thank you to Bruce and the Bookmap team for having me on here today. And uh, I try to keep it PG for the families out there today. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick.